In this video, we'll take a quick look at how to use the Nano VNA to sweep the characteristics of a filter. The filter we'll use is this 4 MHz low pass filter that I coupled up with the Michigan Mighty Might in video number 228. I'll link that video down below. And this is uh, the quick schematic of that filter. Designed it using LC, a little uh, computer program available at this website here. The process will be quite similar to the previous video that showed how to measure an antenna. We first select which traces we want to have uh, displayed, configure the source frequency range we want to measure over, then calibrate the device, and then go measure our part. So let's get started. Now certainly the most important characteristic to look at is S21 or the forward transmission characteristic, but we'll also look at the S11 or input reflection coefficient. We'll also look at the SWR, the input, which is mathematically related to that, of course. And we'll also look at the complex impedance of the input on the Smith chart, because we can. Right, by default, three of the traces we want are already set up. We essentially have the log magnitude of the uh, input reflection coefficient on the yellow trace. We've got the Smith chart for the complex impedance on the green trace. We've got the log magnitude of S21 on the blue trace. And what we'll do is change uh, the last one, the purple trace, to be SWR. I'll bring up the menu, go to display and trace, and select uh, the purple trace and the inverse text tells us we're selected. We can go back, select channel, and put it on channel 0, and then go back to the menu, select format, and hit SWR. Now we have the log magnitude of S11, the log magnitude of S21, the Smith chart of the input reflection, and the SWR of the input. Now we want to sweep this filter from about 1 MHz out to 15 MHz. That'll cover looking at the second and third harmonic of our 3.5 megahertz uh, transmitter. So we bring up the menu, and we'll go back to the beginning, select stimulus, set our start frequency to 1 megahertz, back to the menu, set the stop frequency to 15 megahertz, and now we have the sweep set up. The next step is to calibrate. Now we're going to be using some short coaxial cables to connect up to our filter, so it's generally good practice to calibrate at the device connections themselves. What that will do is remove the delay and characteristic and, more importantly, the impedance transformation that occurs across the transmission line. Now, of course, at the pretty low frequencies that we're dealing with here, the length of this in a transmission line is pretty insignificant and we wouldn't see much of a difference even if we calibrated at the ports here, but it's just good practice to get into. We'll use this little SMA female-to-female -female adapter or bullet to connect our calibration standards to the end of the cable. Okay, so we go into our menu and go back to the beginning and hit Cal. We'll hit Reset to reset the calibration and then hit Calibrate. Now in, the, in this case we're going to be making both a reflection measurement as well as a transmission measurement so we need to run through all of these calibration steps. We'll start by connecting the open to the end of our cable and touch Open. Next, we'll connect our short to the end of the cable and hit short. And then connect our 50 ohm load to the end of the cable. Hit load. Now for the isolation measurement, it's a good idea to terminate uh, channel 1 or the input port. So I'm taking that uh, 50 ohm load and the bullet and connecting it to the cable that's connected to channel 1. And then we can hit isolation. And of course, connect both cables together to do the through calibration. With all the calibrations done, we can hit done. And then let's, let's save it into, in this case, location number four. And now we're ready to make our measurement. When I built this filter, I used BNC connectors. So we need to use some BNC to SMA adapters to be able to connect up to our cables. At these frequencies, the characteristics of these adapters is pretty insignificant, so I don't have to worry about it. When you get up higher in frequencies, you might have to account for the extra electrical length for any adapters that you might use to connect up to your device. So things like port extensions might be important. That will be a topic for a future video. Let's make our measurement. Now with our filter hooked up, let's see what we've got. You can see our low pass filter characteristic here in the blue trace uh, rolling off uh, down that way here. We can see the uh, input reflection coefficient or the inverse of the return loss uh, right here in the yellow trace. Uh, the SWR plot down here in the purple trace, and we can see what the complex impedance is on the Smith chart. You remember we designed this filter to be used with the Michigan Mighty Mite, which had about a 3.57 megahertz operating frequency. 
So let's go take a look and see what uh, the filter is doing at the critical frequencies. So if we work our way up to about the operating frequency of the Michigan Mighty Might, that's about as close as we're going to get, we can see we're down about uh, 8 tenths of a dB. So we've got about a 8 tenths of a dB insertion loss through the filter. Let's look at the second harmonic, which should be a little over 7.5 uh, megahertz or so, or about 7.5 megahertz. So if we work our way down there, and we can see that at the second harmonic, we're going to be sitting, oh, let's see, right in that neighborhood here, about 30 dB down. And that's about what we measured in video number 228. The third harmonic will be about 10.5 megahertz or so in that neighborhood. So let's kind of get up over there. And we can see we're about 47 dB down at the third harmonic. Now, of course, we could put multiple markers on here. We just did this with one marker to save some time. I'm going to remove two of these displays just to clean this up and make it easier to compare with uh, the results that I got from the simulator on this filter. So we'll go to Display and go to Trace. And we're going to turn off the Smith chart. So I'll select that, turn it off. We're also going to turn off the SWR trace. Select that, turn it off. So now we're just left with the through response for the S21 and the S11. Let's compare that result to actually what the design program told us this filter should look like. So remember what those shapes look like. We'll zoom out and bring the simulated results in here. Hey, they look pretty similar. Now I've got some deeper notches, of course, in the simulated results, and that's due to a number of factors. One is that the uh, resolution bandwidth that's used in the VNA isn't, isn't terribly narrow, so it's not going to get us deep into those notches. And of course, I'm dealing with real components here that have real loss and things like that. So, But the fact that uh, we have basically the same shape in that uh, S11 plot uh, is pretty encouraging with the design. And if we take a look at the filter shape characteristic over the same 1 MHz to 15 MHz frequency range, we can see the shape of that plot is very similar. So it tells us we did a pretty decent job with building this filter. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick look at how to use the Nano VNA to sweep a filter. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you hadn't subscribed to my channel already, please do so. And uh, be sure to ring the bell in the lower right corner of the video display to be notified when I post a new video. Thanks again as always for watching.